People power growth, but recruiting and onboarding are expensive, exhausting, and absolutely overwhelming. I've been there and it doesn't have to be this way. Welcome to Hire and Empower. I'm your host, Molly McGrath. Join me as we interview leaders who care about their teams and distill powerful lessons from them. This show is sponsored by H&E, helping organizations to find their best hire and empower them for success. Learn more at hiringandempowering.com. All right. This is a question I get all the time from entrepreneurs. Why why do employees resist change? You know, how to release the employee resistance. All I hear from my employees is when I try to implement something, bring back an amazing strategy that I learned at all the conferences I go to that I know has proof of concept. My colleagues are making goal, exceeding goal, if we could just change, if we could just implement X, Y, and Z. And in my experience, employees really do not resist change. It is all in the deliverability of the change that you want to make. Employees typically, it's all in framing. It's all in the delivery of the message. From an employee's point of view, personal commitment to the organization comes from understanding the following questions that I hear all the time. What am I supposed to do for this organization, firm, what have you? So what, how is this going to impact my role, my time template, my time chunking, and how am I going to have the resources to instill this change? What are the resources to instill this change? What help will I get to do this job or to make this change or to implement this new strategy if I need it? And how and when will my performance be evaluated and what form will the feedback take? What, where, when, how? What will I be paid and how will pay relate to my performance on this change? So, so often it is the lack of clarity around that. If we want to change a system, a process, job descriptions, roles, what I'm doing. I hear this all the time. From an employer's perspective, the employee is resistant to change. From the employee's perspective, all we do is talk about change and then nothing happens. So it's the definition of the entrepreneurial seizure coming and saying, we need changes. We need change up because I just listened to this podcast. I just went to this webinar. I just came back from this conference and blah, blah, blah. And this one reason is why nothing's working, quote unquote, nothing and everything. When people use terms like that all the time, but the employee is typically very, very well invested and excited about change management, about continual improvement. It's just the lack of framework and system to manage that change. They're not, it's not very clear. How hard will I really have to work over what I am right now? You know, what's in it for me? What recognition, financial sport, how's this going to save me time? How's this going to save me frustration? How's this going to streamline the process around everything I do? And how will we know if midway through, what are the continual check-ins if the change that we're making is going in the wrong direction or we have to pivot or possibly it was the wrong area that we needed to change? So employees are absolutely positively open to change. It's all in the manner of how you deliver it. And for my Colby lovers out there, you really have to be very careful with even the word change. And you have to be careful for the time and place that you deliver 
this request or this ideation that you have around change. So the time and the place has to be right, number one. And number two, how you deliver it. So if you're, we are looking to change our intake process, for example, or a step between a, a process within between and be from engagement to closing of the matter, make certain that you workshop it just like you do in all the events that you go to for personal and professional development. So when you sit down with your team, and again, if you have come back with the entrepreneurial seizure in the past, either excited about all these different things we're going to do and we're going to try, or you've had quarterly strategic retreats and we've had all these great ideas and nothing's happened, or in these marketing meetings or staff meetings, we just talk, talk, talk about all these ideas and nothing ever happens with it, then we need a new course. So number one is making certain that when you want to introduce the improvement, the enhancement, the refinement, the change, whatever it might be, that you have enough time scheduled for that. So workshop it, block out a 90 minute block of time. And here's the deal. If you don't have enough time to carve out 90 minutes to treat it like a mini retreat to start whiteboarding and start unpacking and coming out of that meeting with at least a level one strategic roadmap out of that meeting, you will never have the time to fully, wholly implement and deploy the change. So I hear from attorneys and entrepreneurs and team members all the time, we're too busy and we don't have enough time. So before you even utter out of your mouth, I want to start doing this, whether it's something brand new or it's changing something that you're currently doing, you have to really ask yourself as a business owner, how committed am I to this on a scale of one to 10? If it's an eight or higher, even if you don't know the how to, then number two, am I willing to carve out the time to have a conversation. I'm not going to jam it in the middle of a case review meeting. I'm not going to jam it in between a text or a Slack or a Teams or an email. I'm going to give it the proper space and grace and time to sit down and unroll it in a very healthy, very intentional way. And then we're going to have weekly meetings every single week that are hardwired into the calendar to check in and give your employees the respect of they're going to get the time to consistently look at this. And this is what I hear all the time is the biggest breakdown. Your employees are not resistant to change whatsoever. And the way that you release employee resistance is to give them consistent, persistent time and attention. Employees often misunderstand or worse, ignore the implications of change for their end of it individual because of the lack of the commitment from the company, from the entrepreneur. So that's why it seems like they are resisting it because honestly, they're saying, I, why are we even talking about this? Cause nothing's ever going to happen with it. They have evidence and proof of that from prior change at times that we've had these retreats, we've had these rah-rah sessions, we've gotten these emails or a bomb is dropped in the middle of a, at last 10 minutes of an employee meeting saying, I, I want blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, I'll hear attorneys, which I love really aware attorneys now will say, I'm not even going to say anything out loud right now, because we haven't had a proper mini workshop for this to unpack it and unroll it. Because anytime I say an idea or I want to start working on X, I want to start looking at changing X, the whole company shuts down and believes like it was a direction. 
versus an idea or a brainstorming session. So be respectful and mindful. If you don't have the time to give it a proper workshop, 90 minutes at a minimum to sit down and whiteboard it with clarity and time and space with just that one manner versus crammed into a meeting where we have 15 other things on the agenda. And if you don't have the time to meet every single week as the leader, as the mentor, as the coach, as an entrepreneur to lead and manage this or the PLA, if you're listening to this or CEO or COO, then don't even utter the words because you will get resistance. And so employee resistance is really, truly just employees belief and previous experience that we're actually going to follow through on this, that there's actually going to be dedicated time to work on this week after week after week, one small step at a time. And they're picking from their past because they have evidence. So us as leaders need to show up differently in our deliverability of the idea and then the consistency of the weekly meetings to just check in on this one project, seeing where additional support needs to be put forth, where we need to change people's time templates or roles or goals or seats on the bus, where we might need to invest in additional resources tools, training, technology, what have you. So if you are interested and if you are feeling that you're consistently getting employee resistance, I highly recommend that we hop on a call and talk about the Law Firm Admin Bootcamp. In the Law Firm Admin Bootcamp, we spend every single week working on how to shift your mindset and how to respond versus react to your entrepreneurs, activation, maximization, ideation, because you cannot squash it. It will never stop and you're not going to change them. It's all in how you really facilitate and lead it and stop the resistance. So let us know where we can help you and support you in releasing the employee resistance and empowering them and guiding them and giving them the structure for how to handle continual improvement in a law firm, which IE is a business. And we're always evolving. We're always growing. I'll use the word changing. We are in the business a change for our clients for our employees and in the products and services that we deliver. Otherwise we're dying on the vine. We just have to shift the mindset of the employee to support you and empower them and give them permission, responsibility, and authority to hold you accountable to taking the place from ideation to deployment. All right. Until next time. It's been another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. Continue being leaders, leading leaders. We've reached the end of another impactful conversation on the Hire and Empower podcast. Whether this was your first episode or you're a longtime listener, I know you can tell I have passion for people. Whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, I understand the situation you're in. Hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, overwhelming, and if that's not enough, it's also time-consuming. My friends, it doesn't have to be this way. There is a team at H&E that has your back. For over 25 years, they've transformed over 4,000 law firms into efficient, effective, profitable assets for their business and made it fun to come to work again. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our employee leadership program, and the 66-day law firm turnaround at hiringandempowering.com.